We are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And someone said, be thankful unto him, for the Lord is good. We're going to ask that uh, Reverend Marable will come. Bishop Marable, if you have an extra mic there, Bishop Marable is going to come. Do we have an extra mic there? Amen. As you bow your heads and, and just give him the glory, he's going to come right here in the center area here. Amen. As you bow your heads, why don't you thank God for even the marvelous work he's done for you today. Yes, give God some hand praise. Amen. Here in the church, we're all masked up, and that's okay. Amen. We're all, all masked up today. Amen. As Bishop Marable leads us into a word of thanks unto God, and we welcome all of you from afar off to join us in bowing your heads. We say to people, when you worship God, especially on Sunday, you need to dress up for church as well. You have to get up out of your beds, dress yourself up, sit in front of your TV set, and worship God in spirit and in truth. Yes. And we hope that you will even shout amen, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, for God has been good to all of us as Bishop leads us. Eternal God, most blessed and most holy, we worship and we adore you. We acknowledge your infinite glory. We celebrate your divine majesty. We praise your name. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are a protector. You are a provider. You are a lawyer. You are El Shaddai. Heavenly Father, there are so many people that says today, if I am alive, it's because of God. If I am free, it's because of God. If I am healed, it's because of God. There are so many people, Heavenly Father, that says, if I have a degree, it's because of God. Heavenly Father, there are so many people that says, if I have a place of worship, it's because of you. Holy Father, I just want to take a minute today to say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For the first family, hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For Reverend Dr. Larry Bacon, Heavenly Father, that came into this place, into this corner, into this area, Heavenly Father. And you bless them, hallelujah, to, for Mount Zion to be here, King of Kings. Lord, we just want to say thank you, hallelujah, from where Mount Zion was and where it is today, hallelujah. We just want to say thank you, King of Kings. We just want to say thank you, Lord of Lords. We just want to say thank you, God Almighty. We just want to say thank you, loving God. We just want to say thank you, great God Zion, hallelujah. Lord, we just want to say thank you that you are with us today and you will continue to be with us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everyone, wherever they may be, Heavenly Father, connected to Mount Zion, hallelujah. A place of worship, a place of blessing, a place of deliverance, a place of miracle. I will call Heavenly Father a long time ago, Heavenly Father, 2010, when we were going to Haiti, Heavenly Father, I stepped into this, hallelujah, sanctuary and look in the wall, hallelujah, and see your face, Jesus, and see your face, King of Kings, and see your face, Lord of Lords, hallelujah. I just want to say thank you. There is no other place I want to be, Heavenly Father, on Sunday morning, Heavenly Father, than here, Heavenly Father. Nothing is going to keep me away from here, Heavenly Father, because you are here, you are here, you are here, and continue to bless Heavenly Father, Reverend Dr. Larry Bacon, Pastor Larry, Pastor Daniel, the First Lady, and Mount Zion, all of us, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Man, give God some praise in the house. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, let's sing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Come and place. Oh, yes. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy's down. People can't get Oh, and the drug habits on 
house. Thank you, Amen. God. Thank you, you go God. to your seats. Praise thank God. You. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And you're excellent, Oh, God. how excellent is his thank name. You,
give our praise team a great big hand. Give them a great big hand. Amen. We're going to do some preaching right now, so we're going to bring them back later. Amen. In the world that we're living in right now, it's good to remember that Jesus is excellent. That God is excellent with all we're dealing with. It's good to just remember that God is excellent. And my faith tells me that everything is going to be all right. My faith tells me that God is going to make a way where there is no way. My faith tells me that God is going to protect you. That he's going to provide for you. He is excellent. God bless you. God bless your praise team. God bless you. You know, faith changes everything in our lives. Amen. Faith changes everything. It changes our perspective on life. It changes our life all the way. It changes our energy. Faith changes our mood. Faith. My prayer today is as I speak to you on this message that God has provided to me, that your faith rise up. That your faith may rise up. How many received that this morning? Amen. That your faith rise up. Do me a favor before I get started today. I want to help you all out today. And just look at me and just put a big smile on your face. Everyone, just... I see everyone's smile. You got beautiful smiles this morning. They say one of the things about wearing a mask that people miss is not many people smile because people can't see you, right? But did you know that a smile not, is just not for the people that you're looking at, but it's for you too. It's for your own health, right? Amen. So just put a big smile on your face and just wave at your neighbors on the left and right and your neighbor will know that you're smiling at them now so everybody is a lot more friendly in the, in the house of God. Amen, amen, amen. You know, this is such an uh, interesting year. I get the opportunity as a, as a pastor to speak to you all on a, you know, on every Sunday to try to inspire you all through scripture, uh, through openings and, and different words that come to me. But this has been one year because every year we come into the pulpit, it seems like we're dealing with a brand new monster that's out there. 2020 will be a year that's an unforgettable year for all of us who I will say, when we're done with 2020, a lot of you probably want to forget 2020. <laughs> it's been a heck of a year. We're dealing with social unrest. We're dealing with sickness. We're dealing with all this isolation. We're dealing with death, and we're dealing with bad news. People are in need of a hero. In times like these, people are in need of a hero in their life. How I many, if you want a hero to come rescue you from 2020, say I. There we go, say I. I want to speak to you this morning on a hero lives here. A hero lives here. And I'm inspired by the yard signs that we see when we're driving past homes of people that work in the medical industry that are serving on the front lines. I'm inspired by that. And I just want to honor those that work on the front lines. We should give God praise for the people that are serving right now, keeping us all safe. But as that sign identifies that there are people that live in a home that are heroes, I want to inspire you through this word today that God lives on the inside of you, that God is with you, that God is leading you, and that God is guiding you. And what I want you to understand today, that there is a power when you know that God lives on the inside of you. There's a power when you know that God is on the inside. In the book of Corinthians, it says this, do you not know that your body is the, holy te is the temple of the Holy Spirit that is in you? whom you have from God. It's a gift that we find from God that he's given to us. So we learn right here that God lives in us. God lives in you. Say, God lives in me. God lives in me. So what I want to let you know is you can do things in life that others can't because God lives in you. Others can't do some of the things that you can do because God lives in you. When you know that God lives in you, you could do the impossible. Because we serve a supernatural God. I believe that you are a barrier breaker. You are a mountain mover. You are an overcomer. Because God lives on the inside of you. Scripture says it like this. Jesus was there and they said that Jesus hung out with some ordinary people, right? When you look at the disciples in the Bible, they were ordinary people. The first disciple we came up to, he was just a fisherman. They were just out there fishing. 
ordinary people. But he told his disciples this. He said, you will be better off if I go away. Think about that. You will be better off if I go away. Jesus, we would be better off if you go away. What can be better than having you right beside us? walking and talking with us you are our friend here on earth what can be better than that and Jesus said this I will send you a helper so the answer is very simple what can be greater than having God walk beside you in life it is having God on the inside of you you need not to be afraid of where you're going where you when you know that God is going with you amen do I have a witness in the house God lives on the inside of you. And you need to understand this about God. He's concerned about every single area of your life. And it, this is what you don't need to do in life. Don't separate your sacred from the secular. It's nowadays that it seems like people want to make God a, a ceremonious God. As if he's a Sunday only God. But God is not just a Sunday only God. We, we want God, uh, you know, it's, it's as if people want God in their wedding on their wedding day, but they don't want God in their marriage. They want God in the baby dedication, but they don't want to raise their children according to the principles of God. But understand this about God. Everything in our life is important to God. He's not just a Sunday God. He's not just a, you know, every week. He's an everyday God. He's an every hour God. He's an every minute. He's an every second of your life God. He's concerned about everything. Everything is important to God. What you listen, what you take in in life, that's important to God. Your friends that you hang around, that's important to God. How you dress, that's important to God. Everything is important to God. And you ask, why? Why does God, why is that so important? And the Bible says it's simple. For God so loved. It didn't just say he loves you. He so loves you. You are so loved by God. Here's a word for somebody today. If you knew how amazing it is to have God on the inside of you, can't wouldn't be in your vocabulary. You would never say the words can't if you knew how powerful it is to have God on the inside of you because you know that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who lives on the inside of you and gives you strength. Come on, somebody say yes on a Sunday morning. I want to tell you and inspire you this morning that you were made for this. You were made for what we are dealing with in the world today. The things that we are facing, the things that we are hearing. You are made for this because there's a divine call from God that goes out to all people to fulfill the purpose that God has planted in your life. Every one of us here, we're not here by accident. You're not here by accident. You may have surprised someone when you showed up but you did not surprise God when you showed up here. You are not here by accident. You were created on time, at the right place, at the right time to do what God has called you to do in your life. And understand that, that you have what it takes to, go, to get through what we're dealing with in the world. God has planted it in you, whether it be recession, whether it be sickness, whether it be unemployment. God gave you this life because he, was, he knew you were strong enough to live this life. Amen? You are here for a reason. But we find out that so many people nowadays feel powerless and they feel insignificant in life when it comes to dealing with the issues that are out there, when it comes to dealing with the social issues that we're going through right now, or when it comes to dealing with all the world events, people feel powerless. They feel insignificant. Many people, the only significance they find is on social media. That's the only power they feel they have to comment, to share to put out a statement. Some people feel that's the only power that they have, like other people's personal lives are at control of other people, the actions of others, like you're, uncontrol you're not con in control of your own life. People are controlling your lives that you'll never see, that you'll never talk to, that you'll never be beside, they'll never think about you. They're so far away, they're so detached. But at the same time in life, we find out we're overwhelmed now with governmental issues. We're overwhelmed with social justice issues. We're overwhelmed with sickness. And many may think, why should I even try? Even if I get my life together, everything in the world is still going to be crazy. It's still going to be a crazy world out there. 
But nothing could be more damaging to the future that God has in store for you. You got to understand that God gave you a great power. He gave you great power. He gave you the power to control what you think, what you feel, and what you do. What you think, what you feel, and what you do. God gave you this great power of decision. There was a song we used to sing. I love it. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. So you have the power to decide things over your life. So you can decide, are you going to hear the voice of the enemy or what he says? Are you going to listen to the voice that's inside of you, the hero that is planted deep down on inside of you? But I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. Anybody with me? But many people are afraid. They're sad, mad, and afraid right now. Sad, mad, and afraid. I know you know people that are sad, mad, and afraid. Let me tell you something. God didn't do that to you. God didn't give that to you. I want to ask you a question this morning. What determines your quality of life? How you live your life? Do people determine the quality of your life? You can answer it. No? Do politicians control your quality of life? Yeah, somebody shouted, nope, nope, not me. Do the Cleveland Browns determine the quality of your life? <laughs> Someone said, I hope they make it a little bit better this year. <laughs> Does the news determine your quality of life? No, you control what you think, what you feel, and what you do. Here's my point. It's very simple. Don't focus on the negative of what you're hearing. Focus on the small decisions that you make every day because that's going to determine your destiny. That's going to create your destiny. That's why I'm glad that the Lord walks with me and I'm glad that the Lord talks with me and that he leads me and that he's guiding me on a daily basis. And when you realize that God lives on the inside of you, you have the power now to move mountains. You have the power to break barriers. You have the power to overcome any situation that you may face in life. Because there's a power in knowing that God is on the inside of you. I'm going to come on home now. We are walking with God. Say, I am walking with God. Those that walk with God always reach their destination. Those that walk with God always reach their destination. Sometimes you may think that God is doing one thing, but God will say, I was just using that one thing to get you where I need you to be. Amen? Uh, get you where I need you to be. You know, I do this oftentimes with Victoria. Uh, Victoria, we want to get her to eat certain foods right now, to learn how to, you know, eat different things, and she only wants to eat french fries. So that's all she wants to eat is french fries. Hold on. Uh, all she wants to eat is french fries. And, and, uh, what we do is we got to do something really silly. I don't know if you've ever done this before. We got to get the spoon and go, and we get to her mouth and she doesn't open it. So we got to do it all the way again. We do it about four times and then she'll finally open her mouth and she'll eat the food, right? That's what we have to do. But once she finally eats the food, she looks at me and she says, that's pretty good. Give me a little bit more of that, right? You come to a place where you realize that God just has a way of doing things. His ways are not our ways. He does things differently to set us up, to put us in position for what he has in our destiny. David in the Bible, we know that he was anointed king as a young man, right? And he's anointed to be king in front of his brothers right there and his father. And after he is anointed by Samuel in the Bible to be king, then his father told him something. He said, okay, now go back there and tend to the sheep. Now, some of you may have been too big for that. I was just anointed king. You're going to tell me to go tend some sheep? Were you not there at the miracle service where they told everyone that I'm, I'm the king? I got the pictures on my cell phone. I can show them to you. Some of you have been too big for that. But, you, you know, you may have been thinking you need to get somebody else to go tend your sheep. But David understood something. His faith said, I can do this. This is what God is doing with my life right now. Now we know that David is out there and he's tending the sheep. And then his father gives him something else to do. He says, I need you to take this food, take this bread and cheese and take it to your brothers. You know, some of you would have thought, oh, now I'm a waiter. <laughs> I was anointed to be king. Now I'm taking bread and cheese to the very people that didn't want me to be king. 
But David didn't do that. He didn't get an attitude. So, some of you, that's your word today. He said, this is my assignment. This is where God has me at for right now for a reason. So he takes the cheese and bread to the battlefield where his brothers are. And once he gets to the battlefield, there he hears a sound. And he says, oh, wait a minute, what's that sound? He hears Goliath's voice. And then everything on the inside of David said, wait a minute, this is why I'm here right now. I'm not here to bring bread and cheese to everyone. Here, you can take this plate right here. I'm here for that giant right there. That's what God placed me here for. But David didn't know that there was going to be a giant that's going to push him into his destiny. But God did. Here's the point. Sometimes we miss our steps of faith because we're too busy looking at what's going on in the natural, in the natural world. But I need some people that have lived long enough and followed God long enough that can look back and realize that you thought you were going one place and you got, thought God was doing one thing and you found out that God had you somewhere for a whole other reason. That's what living by faith is. That's why I live by faith, because the longer I keep walking by faith, I'm amazed at how God could set me up for victory in my life. And I don't know what he's doing, and I don't know where he's taking me, but I know if I keep walking by faith, God will make a way where there is no way. Do I have a witness in the house of God this morning? And I want to close with this today. God needs you. Say, God needs me. Say, God needs me. Heroes oftentimes need help in life. Batman needed Robin. LeBron needed Kyrie. Heroes oftentimes can't do things by themselves. And this may be weird to say. I was talking to God and he told me, tell them that I need them. And I said, God, they need you. You don't need them. That's all I was thinking. You know, you may be thinking, are you sure? How, why can an all-powerful God need me? But the scripture paints the picture clear. He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branch. Don't you know that a tree can't bear fruit without a branch? So we have a part in God's picture. Say, I have a purpose. We all know Lazarus in the Bible. You can play something slow. In the 11th chapter of John, the death of Lazarus, we know that they put him in the grave, and Lazarus, who was a friend of Jesus, is dead. He's been in the grave for four days. Jesus takes his time getting there. Once Jesus gets there, the family looks at Jesus and says, if you had have been here, he would not be dead right now. And it's an interesting time. There you have Jesus at the grave of Lazarus. And they said, if you had have been here. But Jesus stands before the grave of Lazarus. And they put a big stone, big stone in front of the grave of Lazarus where they buried him. And Jesus gives instructions. We can learn a lot through the stories. Jesus did many miracles in the Bible, but there's certain ones that we actually read about, that were written about, out of all the miracles that Jesus did. And he did it for a reason. His instruction, he looked at the people and he said, roll away the stone. And then he said this, Lazarus, come out. And it says that Lazarus came out. God needs you. There is something that you can do. God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. Here I go. What we learn from this is that if you do what you can do in life, that God will do what you can't do in life. If you do the possible in life, God will do the impossible in life. If you do what is natural in life, God said, I'm in the supernatural business. And I will do the supernatural. Come on, get on your feet and give God praise. If you believe that word, give him praise in the house of God. With every head bowed, every eye closed, we need, there are people that need to hear the good news of God. God is asking, who shall I send? And I believe that God has found a church in you. God has a need for you in your life. And you are not just ordinary. But God created you to be extraordinary. 
because the hero lives on the inside of you. And I just want to pray over you today. You may not belong to Jesus, but understand that he still needs you. He's still calling you. He's still speaking to you. In the book of Matthews, it says, come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Real peace doesn't come from money. Real peace doesn't come from politicians. Real peace doesn't come from status in life. It comes from having Jesus on the inside of your heart. And if you don't have him, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, why don't you just pray this simple prayer with me today? Say, dear Jesus, I love you. I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord. I believe that I am a sinner, but you are a Savior. Lord, come and rescue me. I pray this in your name. Amen, amen, amen. Give God praise in the house right now. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer and you want to join our mission here at Mount Zion, there's a simple thing we want you to text in your phones because we want to be there to support you on your journey. Just text FORGIVEN to 22828. Just text FORGIVEN to 22828 on your phones. And we want to be there to walk with you on this magnificent journey. Give God praise one more time in the house of God. Oh, how you remain standing. What a marvelous sermon that was. You are a hero. You are made to be a hero. Christ resides on the inside of you, which means no crisis is greater than the Christ on the inside of you. And Pastor Dan is absolutely right. We are here for a purpose. And when our purpose is over with, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And so we just need to keep on moving, keep on doing what we're doing, believing that God can do what no other power can do in our lives. And what a marvelous sermon to share with us today. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks, even as we prepare ourselves for offering, even now, this is tithing time and offering time as well, as well. This is tithing time as well. Amen. Give us our tithing song here today. Amen. This is tithing time. Amen. And so we're not only going to give of ourselves, and I'm praying those of you who are sitting watching us right now, that you remember that worshiping is just not about praising and singing and prayer and scripture and then just benefiting from all of the miracles of God, but rather it's also about you giving back to God, even in times like these. We used to sing a song, the more you give, the more God will give back to you. And if there's ever time you do not want to rob from God, it's even right now. That's what the Malachi 3.16 says. Will a man or woman rob God? You ask the question, how have we robbed him? Still, in times like these, in tithe and offering. The Bible says, bring ye all the tithes and the offerings into his storehouse and see, watch what will happen. God will open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, and you won't have room enough to receive them. And the Bible says all nations, everybody around you will walk around and say, how are you doing so well in times like these? All nations will say, you must be very, very blessed. It's all because, it's all because we have not abandoned the mission of the church. We thank you. We still have uh, mortgage notes uh, on our Fine Arts Center, we still have a lot of obligations that we're trying to fulfill to make sure that this church continues to be this church in this community, in this city, in this state, and this nation. Amen, Mount Zion? Amen. God, we thank you right now for this marvelous worship experience, and even in our giving, God, we are returning back to you, believing that you will open up the windows of heaven if we become faithful and remain faithful, God. We know that you're still making a way out of no way. And while there may be some concerns down here, there are no concerns in heaven as you open up these windows and start to point out these blessings unto us that there won't be room enough to receive them. In Jesus' name we pray. This is tithe and offering time. We're going to ask all of you to come and distance yourself six feet away from each other. Amen. If you just stay six feet, there's three tithing and offering trays and we invite you all to come up and be faithful unto God even now. Bless, 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 let me hear you.
of God, if you want to be blessed, if you can, all things, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, and of thine own, have we, have we. God, a great big hand praise. As you go to your seats, we're going to give the announcements today at the end to share with you the things that we're doing here at this church. And again, we thank you for all of your support. And then we're going to have a final prayer for our children. Even though your children may not be here today, they're getting ready to go back to school and parents and grandparents and great, great grandparents are concerned as to how they're going to return. Some schools are in persons, others are virtues, others are combination. Uh, here in, I believe, uh, the Bedford area, Macedonia area, doing combination. And so we want to pray for our, our families. And even if our kids are at home, it's going to be a little bit more rough of them, for them just to be at home and remain disciplined. And we're going to ask that uh, Minister Rivers will lead us in this uh, closing word of prayer. We're going to get her a mic as our announcements are coming even now. Amen. That's fine. Amen. There is power in prayer. Join us on Wednesdays for War Room Prayer. We want to pray with you weekly, and we now have a phone number where you can hear the prayer for the week. Call 641-715-3900. Then put in the code 783-420. We also have prayers for you on our YouTube page prayer list. Look up War Room Prayers. In partnership with University Hospitals, we will be taking on a wellness initiative called A Healthier You. We want to make sure you have up-to-date information on how to keep your health during this time. Each Tuesday, we will release interviews with doctors and medical experts on different health and wellness topics. Here at Mount Zion, we make a difference. We have released our outreach mission video on YouTube where we are sharing some of our community efforts. We pray that you would give a special offering towards this ministry and take the time to see what we are doing with our nursing home partners, food pantry, local school systems, seniors in our area, and the village of Oakwood to build a sense of hope in our community. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Give God a great big hand praise for what we're doing as we remain standing on our feet. Again, we thank all of you for joining us as we remain standing for this final prayer by our minister today and Reverend Rivers here today. We're going to ask Reverend Rivers to do the uh, benediction and the minister will lead us in a moment in a word of prayer. Amen. Would you bow your heads and start praying for our families and our children here at Mount Zion, you don't know it, but we're really doing a lot of work in the greater Cleveland and the Oakwood Village Bedford community. 
Every day, I know you won't believe this. I told this to somebody. They said, how are you doing? And I said, by the grace of God. We feed 250 senior people every day. Every day. We have a commercial kitchen back there. Yeah, give God some praise. We feed 250 people. And that kitchen is ran every day. Monday through Friday, Saturday, I'm not sure about Sunday, certainly not. But the Monday through Friday, we're feeding 250 people, senior people who want, who need to be fed. We are also serving our children, and we're making sure that children who are not having, don't have parents at home, make sure that they're fed as well, not only in this area, but also in Cleveland. We're making sure that people who do not have food and other sustenance, that they're being taken care of. We just partnered with the uh, South Point Hospital and they're going to be now uh, given the COVID test for those who need to have those COVID tests at no cost. We're also doing that across the greater Cleveland area with Metro Health Hospital. And we said to them, not only do we want you to go to community centers, but there are certain churches and even in the inner city where people do not have affordable health care. And we're saying to them, we've served about a thousand people already through our ministry uh, here at Mount Zion and United Pastors, making sure that people are going to be taken care of. You don't have to be afraid as long as the church stands and be the light of the world church is going to make sure that the community is taken care of. People are more important to me than anything else in the world. So we're praying for our children. And there's a video out there we want you to see as the minister leads us into this. And then Reverend Rivers will give us the benediction. Heavenly Father, we come to you because we know no other way. Thou art God. Thou art mighty. Father God, we love you, we praise you, we worship you. Now, Lord, we ask that you hear our humble prayers. And Father, you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then, Father God, you said you would hear from heaven and heal our land. And Lord, you know all the healings that we need. Lord, we stand in the gap for our children today. They need a healing, Lord. This is such a different environment for them. Help them mentally and physically. Help them in their studies, whether go to a location for schools and daycares, or if they're studying at home. Meet all their needs. Cover them, oh God. Cover their parents. Show them. Keep them in courage. And help them to remember that you are God. And beside you there is no other. And that they can do all things. In all ways. Through Christ. Yes. Which strengthens them. And they will get through it. We thank you, oh thank God. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, by the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us forever and evermore. Let us all say together, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Don't forget that the application to get the ballot to vote is coming in your mail this week. Make sure you fill it out and send it back uh, to the Secretary of State. Put two stamps on it just to be safe. Amen.